is the first light kiln everything that it's cracked up to be? Well, today I'm going in depth. George here with the New Hunter's Guide, the YouTube channel, and number four hunting podcast of the year, according to Feedspot. And today we're going to talk about the first light kiln, both the crew and the long johns. Now this is a 250 weight merino wool base layer system. And in case you're unfamiliar with what that weight means, that means that you've got 250 grams of merino for every square meter of fabric. So that's telling you the weight of material that you have occupying that much space of merino. And each one of these weighs less than a pound. They're a little more than half a pound, somewhere in between there but I've been using these for a while. Now, before you even ask, no, this review is not sponsored. I bought both of these with my own money. No, this is not just some unboxing where I'm keeping the tags on and sending them back after I do the video review. I did an entire video exposing those shenanigans, and I'll link to that one down below if you guys are interested. I have hunted in these things for two hunting seasons. I've worn them climbing hills, moving, huffing, puffing, swimming, Sweating. I've worn them sitting in trees, completely still and motionless for hours on end. I've definitely put some miles on this set. In addition to that, I've worn them to camp. I have lived day and night in these things. Eat, cook, sleep, hunt for three straight days wearing these basically non-stop. All right, so I have worn them quite a bit and I am ready to tell you guys whether or not they measure up. Now, the first thing is what makes Merino wool special? All right, these base layers are not cheap. Get them on sale. Yes, they go on sale, wait for the sale, buy them then, but even then they are still not cheap. So what makes Merino wool so great to begin with? Well, it's a handful of simple things. First of all, all merino wool is, is the wool from the merino sheep, all right? It's just that simple. There's not that much more to it than that. All right, but that particular wool has very fine fibers. And those fine fibers enable them to weave very fine fabric that is not itchy like normal wool. It also doesn't have the bulk of normal wool, but it has the insulative values. So you can have something that is this thickness, this weight, that keeps you just as warm as basically a wool sweater would with significantly more weight. Those finer fibers enable you to have the same amount of material in a much smaller package, which makes them ideal for base layers. In addition, those fibers help this thing wick moisture faster. So it pulls the moisture away from your body quicker and dries faster. So they're soft, they're warmer and they dry faster. And like all wool, they do very well for odor management. But the number one thing that I really like about this base layer set and Merino in general is that it is thermally regulating. You see, God designed these sheep so that they would be warm on very cold, frigid nights and they would not overheat on very hot, sunny days. And so when you wear this compared to synthetics, what you're getting is this more balanced package that helps you keep from overheating when it warms up, but still keeps you warm when it gets cold. It's really good for days where you go out in the morning and it's 34 degrees at dawn, and then it just climbs up, gets you up to 70 degrees by noon. It is really hard to hunt those kind of days, especially if you can't move much or change your gear as you're going, and Merino does a great job with this. This is what First Light considers to be their mid-weight layer, all right? The kiln is their mid-weight base layer. However, it is much warmer and much nicer than most synthetic mid-weights that I have seen. Now, this is not a Merino versus synthetic video. I have other videos for that, and I will link to those at the end maybe. But a 250-weight Merino wool top and bottom is substantial. In fact, a lot of other Merino brands, they top out their heavyweight layers at just a little bit thicker than this, whereas First Light goes all the way to 350, and very few people 
will go to 350. So this is a really good, significant base layer. Uh, it's, it's not super thick, but because it's merino, it can be thinner, yet still have significant mass to it and be able to keep you warm and keep you dry. I spent a lot of time studying merino wool and basically all base layer technology. I mean, poured hours into it before I decided to go with First Light, try them out a couple years ago. So I have done quite a bit of research on this subject. And basically guys, a big thing you need to keep in mind here is if you're comparing these base layers against other base layers, you need to be comparing layers that are in the same class. All right, so if you put these up against your synthetic base layers that cost $15, these are gonna blow them out of the water, okay? They're not competing against those. They're way better. What they're competing against is your synthetic base layers that are of that same price range. All right, so that is what you have to compare them against. If you have some regular Brand X base layers and you're wondering, okay, are these gonna be better than those? Yeah. Yeah, they're gonna be a lot better than those. I can pretty much guarantee it. What you're comparing these against is the other highest end base layers on the market. And in my opinion, the kiln comes out very high. And depends on what you wanna use it for. If you're hunting negative 30 degrees in January, you probably wanna go for the furnace base layer, which is 350. This is the mid-weight. So this is what you use, or what I use basically most of the season, early, mid, and late unless it is frigid and then I'll switch over to the furnace or if it's really cold I'll stack the furnace on top of this and these work really good because they're not so thick that they have to be the only base layer that you wear kind of like the furnace you're not stacking anything on top of those but you can stack those on top of these so you could wear a lot of other layers on top of these these work really good they don't bunch up in the elbows at all they've got the thumb loop there I got the one that has the cruise neck they've got different necks available including a hoodie if you're into that but these fit so good I cannot overstate how good these feel when you're wearing them people ask that they itch no they do not itch they're way past itching all right this base layer technology is way above that these things feel so I told you I live day and night in them for three days they are so comfortable they're like a second skin but a thick warm quickly drying second skin. You can walk in them. There's basically no resistance to your knees whatsoever. All right. These pants do not bunch up around your knees. They do not put any strain on them. I have covered miles and miles and miles wearing these and I'm sure I will cover miles more. They work great all season long. They are just an outstanding base layer. Probably the, my favorite base layer that I own right now. These things are top drawer. So a big question is, are these base layers worth the money? And I'm going to tell you why I think they are, but they absolutely are worth the money. I, like I said, I bought these with my own money. Nobody is sponsoring this video, though I would ask you guys to please hit the thumbs up button to support the channel. And if you like videos like this, field tests, kicking the tires on assumptions and reviews, why don't you go ahead and hit the subscribe button as well. These things guys are outstanding. All right. Now, if you have the money, they're worth the money. If you don't have the money, well, that's another story, but you can save up for them. I did not buy all these base layers and all this gear that I review on this channel in one season. A lot of this stuff comes over the course of years and years and years. Bought one set of base layers one year, bought another set of base layers the next year, and that's just how you have to do it with some of these things. One thing to be aware of for Merino wool, if you're not familiar, is some Merino wool garments get what I call the sheepy smell when and they're wet. And that is just leftover oils in the material that have not been washed out through the manufacturing process. And when you get wet, it just kind of smells weird. It has a little bit of a funky smell to it. And as soon as it dries, it goes away. That sheepy smell disappears after enough washing and use. All right, so when I got these, they did have a little bit of the sheepy smell. It wasn't too bad. So I washed them, I think four or 
or five times, wash dry, wash dry. Of course, you always want to line dry, never put these in the dryer unless you want them to get smaller. And after that, it was basically all gone. I wore them, washed them, wore them, washed them. And then eventually the sheepy smell is completely disappeared. So you do want to be aware of that. That is one con that you have with Merino is that it may have that smell from the factory and you've got to wash it out. However, when you get synthetics, they smell great right out of the box. Amazing. And then after you wear them enough, even though you keep washing them, then they develop a smell that pretty much never goes away unless you you really know what you're doing so that is one of the big pros to merino uh, but you got to balance that all right if you're not used to that i freaked out the first time i got a merino wool base layer and it had that sheepy smell to it when it was wet totally freaked out contacted the company jumping all over the forums online trying to figure out what is going on with this why does it have this smell what do i do do i send it back and then i learned oh no you just wash it and wear it wash it and wear it and then it basically fades to nothing another really big thing with this piece of gear guys is that it keeps you warm when wet it's one of the properties of wool and merino wool and it's one of the things that drew me to it most people come to merino from deer hunting elk hunting turkey hunting something like that i came in from the other side from duck hunting because i would drag a sled of decoys and gear half a mile or a mile through the woods set it up by the time i was ready to hunt i was completely drenched and soaking wet and i freeze out and be completely cold within the first couple of hours and I needed something that was going to keep me warm when wet and dry quickly and Merino has helped me a lot tremendously in that area actually these things dry really well when wet now people debate all the time what dries faster Merino wool or synthetics and I decided a while back that I was done debating it I was going to test it so I did an experiment on that subject Subject, which you guys can check out right here and then I'll link here to another video that I did on how warm these things are compared to other materials guys thank you so much for watching I really appreciate it till next time God bless you and go get them in the woods